Well, hello, and let's paint this cute Christmas stocking with me with some watercolor. Come on, let's go. Now, um, if you don't know me, I'm Viv with Art with Viv, and I do this once a week to have a little paint along. And today, we are painting this cute little stocking. Normally, I put it out on Monday, but it's Tuesday. Better late than never. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get some clean water and just cover that stocking part. Don't go where the furry rim is. Leave that alone. Leave that dry and just do the stocking part. Looks like I got some red in my, is that my camera or is that some red in my paintbrush? Either way, it doesn't matter. We are just going to go ahead, get a nice Christmassy green, and then we're just going to go around the edges. We want to go around the edges of the stocking because I want to make it a little bit darker on those edges, a little bit lighter in the center, so that'll give it some dimension and make it look more realistic although we're not really going for super realistic but it will give it some dimension make it look believable like a stocking so that's what we're going to do there now i'm going to get a little bit of darker green and we're going to go around the edges again and that while it's still wet you want these two greens to blend at the edges you don't want a hard edge you want that stocking to still be wet when you add this dark green and that will help um, make the the shadows even darker and once you put something dark next to something light it really makes that lighter look light lighter the light look lighter and the dark look darker that did not even come out right I got my tongue wrapped around my eye teeth and couldn't see what I was saying but anyway the point is if you put a light next to a dark then they are gonna make each other look even more intense how about that that sounds that sounds more correct all right, so that's all we're gonna do. Once we do that, we're gonna let this dry. Just let it dry completely because you don't wanna run your hand through it, smear it all over your paper. I speak from experience. Do as I say, not as I do. Now I'm just gonna get some of this warm red and some of the cool red and mix it together. And some say that gives you more of a true red. I just like it because then it's not too warm or not too cool. It's sort of in the middle. I've switched over to a tiny detail brush. I love these little things, but they do not hold a lot of water so i felt feel like i have to fuss a little bit too much but the they're so small i can get in these really tiny areas when we do these little monday minis even if this is a monday mini on a tuesday so what i'm doing here is the red stripes on the candy cane i am making the very edges the dark red like i'm concentrating the color there it's about the thickness of a nice thick cream and then I'm taking my brush, rinsing it a little bit, and taking that clean water that's still on my brush and sort of blending it toward the center. But that center of the stripe, I want to leave a lighter red. I want to leave that lighter red so that it looks like a highlight. And you're going to continue doing all of the red stripes in the same way. Darker on the edges, lighter in the center. And go around, go around as you go. Just remember how your stripe is facing so you'll know where to put you know as it curves around this position of the shadow is going to change that edge shadow so that's what i'm trying to say just be be mindful that as the candy cane curves so are the shadows of the light and dark are going to change places a little bit you want it to stay lighter in the center so that it looks like a highlight then what you want to do is finish this candy cane. Then we're going to finish the other candy cane. I'm not going to show that on camera because voila, you just saw how to do this candy cane. So you can do the other candy cane. So right now I am just going to get some, some ye lemon yellow. I'm calling it lemon yellow. I'm not sure that that's the actual name of that color. And I'm painting in the center of my orange slice that I have hanging on the side as a little decoration and then there's another orange slice just sort of tucked down in to to the stocking and this sort of just kind of reminds me of the stockings that I used to get on Christmas morning when I was a kid my mom would always fill them with nuts and oranges and candy we never got presents in our stockings and but they were whole oranges they weren't these orange slices these are more of those orange slices that you you know you dry in the oven and once you dry them in the oven you can make them into decorations these were whole real juicy oranges 
and she would put those in there and sometimes apples and then we would get a, an assortment of nuts which I loved but they would still be in the shell so we'd have to shell them ourselves so that was my little Christmas our Christmas tradition so now I went and got a little bit of yellow ochre and mixed it with some of that gold in that warmer yellow and I am just painting the surface of the little bell we got some little jingle bells here and I'm trying to pick up the center part. I want to pick that center part up because it's a little bit too dark. So I'm picking that up as we go. Um, so it'll be a little bit lighter in the center. Now I'm coming back and I am going to go ahead and get some more sort of red mixed, reddish orange. And I am going to paint in like the sections on the orange. You know how it looks sort of like a wagon wheel. At least that's what oranges look like to me. And grapefruits so we're going to paint in those little sections and we're going to sort of round them off at the top so they look like little triangles and we're doing that with that darker sort of yellow orange or no, not yellow orange red orange red orange people don't listen to me watch me because <laughs> sometimes I say the wrong thing <laughs> all right so we've got those painted in and that'll just give us a nice base of texture and I'm adding just a little bit of the reddish orange as a shadow in some of the places where the bell overlaps on that orange slice and where the orange slice is sort of peeking out of that fur. You know, the fur is going to be putting a shadow on that orange. So we're put a little shadow there. Now I'm mixing up some yellows and some darker greens just to get a different green than my actual stocking to get more of a foliage green. Some people think drink greens are tricky. I don't, I don't think so. You just mix up what you want. If it looks green, it's good enough to go. But <laughs> you do what you want to do. <laughs> don't listen to me. I've also put a little brown in there because I want the center of these um, pine branches to have like, you know, this branch and I want it to be more of a brownie green. And so all I'm doing is I'm taking my fine little detail brush here and I believe it is a zero two size. And I'm just making little lines little fringy pine needles off of the center off of that center branch I want it kind of full I'm also doing some like up the I don't know how to explain it because I can't sh you can't really see it when I do it on camera but you don't want the, the little pine needle sticking just from each side of the branch you also want some going across the branch toward the top so I'm just going to continue to add some more of these branches and then we're going to move on to the next thing. So there are your branches. It's all the same technique. You can mix any kind of greens. Now I've got sort of a burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of the orange and I am, oh yeah, mixed not with the orange, excuse me. I've got a little bit of burnt sienna or brown mixed with that yellow ochre and that golden yellow and that's going to be our shadows for the jingle bells so I'm just putting that where they would have some shadows normally and you can see that there's shadows at the top where that pine branch is sort of sticking over it there's shadows on the side where the two bells are actually touching each other so there's a lot of opportunities for shadows on these bells plus they have a little ridge around them where the bells are actually the two sides of the bell are actually crimped or clamped or I don't really know how they do it but they stick them two bells together and it leaves a ridge around the center so we're, we're trying to make sure that that stands out by leaving it lighter and doing shadows on either side of it now I'm taking a little bit of that burnt sienna, a little bit of that brown and mixing it with my orange mixture and that is going to be some of the shadows now I'm not drawing just like long lines I'm just drawing small little lines here, let me get a little bit closer so you can see a little better. See, I'm just drawing the tiny lines here and there. I'm also going a little darker where the rind meets the flesh of the orange. And I'm leaving a lot of that lighter yellow shining through, sparkling through, so that it looks more realistic. So I have some lights, some mediums, and some darks. I'm taking that same sort of brownie orange. I'm calling it a brownie orange because I mixed a little bit of burnt sienna with it. And I'm just going around the outside rind or peel, whatever you want to call it. I call it a rind. A lot of people call it the orange peel. Uh, either way, it's fine. Now I'm put just taking the darkest color I have and 
painting in and that is a really dark brown I'm painting in those little holes that are in the jingle bell on the ends that helps carry that sound now I just got my blue and this is almost well not quite I was gonna say it's a Tiffany blue but it's really not it doesn't have enough green in it to be a Tiffany blue but it is a light blue and we're gonna paint in a little present now I didn't get presents in my stockings we only got candy and fruit which I absolutely loved anyway especially the mixed nuts we would get pecans we would get walnuts almonds hazelnuts brazil nuts and i think that was i think that was it i'm not 100 percent sure but i if there was any other ones i can't remember them but those are the ones i remember and we had those little nut crackers not not the fancy kind that you decorate with i mean the metal kind that you actually use in the kitchen and we would just crack those nuts and we'd have the little nut pickers that's what we called them and pick out the meat the nut meats out of the uh, shells we just had that was like one of my favorite things at christmas such a simple thing and such a non-festive thing but it was definitely one of my favorites loved doing that so anyway we've got the side of the uh, present darker the side facing us and then the top of the present is a lighter blue so that gives it a little bit more dimension and now I'm just painting sort of a red bow a reddish brownish bow on top so that it'll have a little bow and you can see it I'm taking another reddish brown oh no excuse me i've paint i've mixed up sort of a dirty gray color and the way i did that was just with red blue and yellow just mixed it all together all the colors actually it's just the colors that are on my palette and that's going to be the white part of the rind we don't want it to be super white because it would not look natural if that the white pithy part of that orange rind was completely white so that wouldn't look right so you don't want to do that so I've decided I'm gonna add a few more branches, just a few more pine branches in there, cedar branches, whatever kind of branches you want. I've, I've got them going on here, Christmas tree branches. And, and I'm mixing some different kinds of greens because I really like to have a variety of greens. It doesn't show up as well on the camera, but when you see it in person, you can see all the variations of the green, and it's really pretty. Now I'm taking my dark brown, and I just sort of uh, painted a, a stem or a branch down in the center. So now I'm going to work on this little bow again. I'm add a little bit more red, add another side to it. If you hear that hooting in the background, that is Dorian Gray. As usual, he is cheering us on. I love that little bird. <laughs> He is a sweetie pie. He's cheering us on, and he is our biggest cheerleader. And um, I always enjoy painting near him because I always feel like I have my own cheering section. So now the present is almost in there. It's looking pretty good. I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this painting. I think I'm going to put some more pine boughs. I'm just trying to make this what's inside of this stocking. I just want it to look full and pretty. And decorative so I'm just filling in a little bit more greenery because I really didn't know what else to draw in there besides the candy canes and the present and some orange slices it was just things that I could think of that would be Christmassy things that I have around the house now I'm taking sort of the really really pale blue and I'm gonna paint in this other side of the box of the Christmas present and I'm add some shadows where the um, orange slice overlaps that box and where the ribbon overlaps the box so have a little bit of shadow there and I'm doing that while it's still a little bit damp so that it won't be such a hard edge when it dries and just getting back there in that back part of that top of the of the present it doesn't have to be perfect and if you don't like it you can take a black ink pen waterproof and just sort of out not ink pen but micro pen or something like that and just sort of outline what what you want highlighted i'm not going to do that on this one but you can and it'll give it a little extra something now i've got just a really pale blue gray mixed up and i think i just mixed up some of my dark blue with a little bit of my dark brown and watered it down it's really it's waterier waterier then skim milk and I'm just putting some shadows on that white fur that white fur cuff and I'm probably going to use this also to make the shadows on the white stripes of the candy canes because 
they're kind of disappearing into the background since the background's white. Now right there I just took my brush with some clean water and just I am just sort of going over all of those all of those shadows just to soften them up a little bit it's just so they won't be so harsh. And now we're going to work just like we did with the red, but we're going to use this really watery blue gray. And we are going to go on either side of each one of the white sections and just put shadows in. And we're not going to get real fussy about it because and have to blend it toward the center stuff. We're just going to do it like it's just do it like that. We're not we're not getting too picky with it. Let me add a few more shadows to my little bow here. I like this. This is this is a cute. This would make a cute little gift card or gift tag or something. You just put a nice cardstock back on it, something decorative, and cut this paper decoratively, and it would be really good. I've got another video that I will link at the end that shows you how I made a gift tag out of one of these little paintings. So I will link that on the end at the end of this video, and you can go click on it and check it out. So now let me check it out. Let me see what we need. It's a I, I like it, but I think the stocking needs some decoration. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get some white gouache. Oop, got a little carried away. First, let me get this red and just do a, a, some little red berries. It needs something. So let's do the red berries next. But after this, I am going to get some white gouache or either you can use PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. I really like that. That's one of probably one of my favorites. Yeah, I think that red, those red berries fill it out nicely. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my, my white gouache and get it ready. So, and once I get this all stirred up, I'm just going to stick a little bit of it on my palette. And we are going to paint some designs on this cute little stocking. So I've got it mixed. I've got some water in it. And I'm not using the white watercolor. I, I need something more opaque because it's got to go over that green. And it's fairly thick. It's probably thicker than cream. The first thing I'm going to do is just do some little dots, some texture marks across that, across the stocking part, the fuzzy part, so it looks more like fuzziness. And then put some highlights on the fruit and on the candy canes and down the bow with that white. Put a few little highlights on those jingle bells and the orange slices. And just give it just a little spark. It just, just gives it a little sparkle, sparkle. We like a little sparkle, sparkle. So now we are going to go ahead, put some designs, fancy up this, fancy up this stocking a little bit. Or you could leave it just like this. If you don't like the design, leave it green. It looks beautiful just like it is. But you know, I am of an era that too much is not enough for me. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm sort of. A throwback to the Victorian area. The more the better <laughs> for me. The more junk I put on something, the happier I am. <laughs> so we're just doing some simple stripes though. Nothing fancy. Just going to do some stripes. And maybe some dots in between some of the stripes. Just, I don't know, just to give it some interest. It almost a little bit Scandinavian-ish. Um, I think I'm going to do some snowflakes here across the top. Now, my snowflakes are not going to be the best. I'm not a good freehand snowflaker, but I'm not going to worry about it. Y'all can judge me all you want to, but this is my this is my painting, and I'm doing it like I want to do it. So I'm just adding some little freehand snowflakes. I did a dot, and then I did sort of a hexagon. Wait, a hexagon? How many sides is a hexagon? Anyway, I did a geometric shape in the center, and then drew lines through that shape at each point. And then I did some little branches off of each one of those lines. And then I did some little, uh, I call them mountain caps, in between each line, going the opposite direction. If that, I'm not sure if that makes sense. But again, snowflakes are optional. Um, my snowflakes aren't the best, but I kind of like them. They look a little crafty. They look a little homemade. I'm going to put like one snowflake kind of peeking around the edge there. Like he's coming around from the back. So that it looks like the snowflakes are going all the way around the stocking. And there you go. We are almost finished. We're just going to add a little few little, you know, dots of this gray blue. This really pale blue gray that we made just for some more shadow and some more texture and there there i think this would make an absolutely excellent one so i'm gonna link that video here and thank you for watching and i will see you next week and i'll try to get it on monday